Hello, this video is going to show off some of the options um, and customization uh, things that you can do with the minimap asset for Unreal Engine. Um, so again, when the project opens up, you're going to uh, see this main city level. So if I just run this, you'll see that how this looks like when you um, have the minimap on the top right of the screen. So you can see that it's got a um, 2D, repre 2D representation of the city. You see that it's got the player in the middle of the, the minimap and you see that it's got the it's got all these icons, uh, quest markers, uh, treasure chests. Um, you see that it's got it um, can transition into different rooms. It tracks moving actors like this green NPC. It's got um, it's got like these vendors. Uh, you can optionally put inward icons above their heads. Um, you can have those icons animate up and down as well, or left and right. So there's a few options there. Um, and also when you sort of touch the NPC, you can change the um, the type of icon that's above the head, <clears throat> and that's going to update in the minimap as well. So uh, I encourage you to have a look at this map, see how things are how things are set up. Um, but for our purposes, we're going to look at a a simple map just, just so that I can um, sort of more easily explain uh, some of the options. So if we go to the demo folder um, and in the minimap, go to maps. Let's open the map basic area uh, level. So you can see that I have a, a pretty basic map. It's got um, sort of one hallway with three rooms attached to it. And if you've, if you've watched the setup video, which I highly advise you to have a look at, because um, that shows you how to actually set up the minimap, <clears throat> you see that I have one minimap asset that uh, covers the entire level. So this is top-down view. You can see that the minimap trigger uh, covers the entire playing space, which is what we need. Um, I've created a minimap image using the same method that I that I did in the setup video. Um, made it look a little bit nicer with like, uh, you know, dotted lines and things like that. But again, the way this image looks is up to you. The important thing is that the border has to match the, um, the trigger area and you just have to trace the the level geometry and all the uh the points of interest in your in your um in your art program so if we go back to this level go back to perspective mode um and then if i run it i'm just going to go over like what this what this map has so i have a home point so right here i've got if you look at the mini map there's a home icon um, I have a couple of NPCs with icons on the minimap and above the head. So this one might be someone who sells like melee weapons. I have a few NPCs here that are just walking around in circles just to show you that um, you can have moving actors in the in the minimap and they will they will track update. Um, have a quest NPC here. So if you go close to him, um, he will turn that um, available quest to like a, a finished quest icon. So again, this logic is obviously just very basic. I've just got it so that if you walk up to him, that quest icon will just update. So if you walk up to him again, that quest will disappear. That simulates you completing the quest. We have a few other actors here with icons. Um, and then in this room over here, we have a few red NPCs. Um, they have red dots, so they could be enemies. Um, specifically, one of them will have a a icon above the head. So this could be like a boss character. Um, so you can see on the minimap, there's two red dots and then there's one with a skull. But I've only ha I've only got the one with the skull actually showing in game. Um, again, if you've seen the previous video, you, you can see that you can set that up optionally. I have treasure chest here as well. So when you open it, when you get towards it, uh, the, the chest opens, simulates you opening the chest, the icon disappears in world um, and in the, in the minimap as well. Um, and then in the final room, there's just uh, some additional NPCs, so nothing really new here. So uh, I'm going to go over some of the options for the minimap first, and I've already gone over these in the setup video, but I'm just going to go over them again just for completion's sake. So if you click on the minimap asset, uh, and then you go to the properties, you'll see that it has a bunch of things that you can sort of play around with. Um, the minimap scale, if I set that to um, something bigger or smaller, that just controls how big the minimap is actually on screen. It is anchored to the top right of the screen. So if I set that to two, you can see that the minimap is is really really big. Um, now obviously the bigger your minimap is, the higher resolution images you're going to need to import. Um, 
you know, the minimap can be sort of as big as you want, but your images need to need to support it in terms of resolution. So I've designed this uh, the icons to be kind of smallish. So, and, you know, if, if your minimap is much bigger than this, which I don't really imagine you would want it to be, um, you're going to need like higher res versions of your icons. So if I set that to say 0.5, you'll see that the minimap is going to be half the size or a quarter of the size. Um, but by default, I've set it to one. Um, so you can play around with that. The area size I've set up, uh, I mentioned in the in the setup video that this is just the size of the trigger box and you really want this to encapsulate the the entire area that the minimap is going to represent. So I suggest having like a little bit of a, a little bit of a border um, around the extremities of the map. Um, and this is um, like, this has to be like a square area because the minimap only supports a a uniform size. So this is, uh, the minimap is currently a circle, but it's still like, um, you know, the same dimensions X and Y, right? So there's only one value for the size. The area height, uh, again, I mentioned in the set video, is that the, the height controls the, the trigger volume. So uh, for this particular minimap, only things that are within this volume will get tracked. So again, if I say, um, if, if I, you know, move the trigger down something like this, and let's say I have like a, a second level um, with another minimap like that, and I want to and I want to track actors separately in that upper level. Then you can play around with the area height. So maybe I want to make that like one thousand. Um, maybe there's three levels. So again, um, the minimap system supports uh, changing minimaps and going uh, between different areas. So I'm just going to undo all that. So that's the height. Uh, the shape of it, I can set that to a square, a support circle or square. Um, so you can choose like how the minimap looks. You can use, it uses the same image. So you do the setup exactly the same as, uh, as I went through in the first video. Um, but if you just set it to square, it will just work. You don't have to do anything extra. Um, the camera, so no rotation basically means that if I rotate the camera, the minimap doesn't doesn't rotate, it's static. If I set it to rotate according to the camera, then when the camera, oh, sorry. Uh, one more thing that I should probably just quickly explain is that the camera rotation only works with the circle because the circle, doesn't matter how you rotate it, the circle still stays the same, but um, the square one doesn't, doesn't sort of really make sense. Um, the camera, if you set it to camera and set it to the circle type, then when you rotate the, the camera, the minimap will will rotate with it. Um, and then finally, if you set it to player rotation type, then that is based on the player's facing direction. So you can see that if, if I don't move the camera, but if I move the players, then it will always um, rotate the minimap to face where the player is facing, not, not the camera. Now, most games are either none. So for like, you know, MOBAs, the um, minimap doesn't doesn't really rotate um, or it's camera. Um, player, I don't think I've really ever seen a game using it, but it was such a simple thing for me to add that it's there in case you want it. But normally it's, it's probably either none or camera. Um, the zoom out is how far the camera is looking down on the minimap. So 0.45 at the moment kind of looks like that. You can see that you can sort of see some nice details. You can sort of see where you're going next. Um, that's quite a nice size. If you set the zoom out to say like uh, one, that means the camera is going to be zoomed out a lot more and the and the minimap is going to be a lot smaller, but you'll see more, more, more of it. So you can see that if I set it to one, um, I can almost see like the entire map. If you set it to sm smaller, let's set it to like 0.2, then the camera is going to be really zoomed in. So if you're having like a maze type game and you don't want to sort of show like an overview, you can set that to 0.2. Um, and now the camera is uh, really, really close to the level. But for this particular level, uh, 0.45 seemed to work pretty well. So let's set it back to that. Move with player. Um, again, if I set it to, if I turn that off, that essentially means that the minimap is not going to move with the player. The minimap is static. It can still rotate. So 
Generally, if you want the mini map to not move with the player, you probably want to have to you probably want to turn off rotation as well. Um, so let's turn off rotation, and then now you're going to have a mini map that doesn't move. Um, so the player the player's position is not always in the middle of the screen. Um, obviously, in this case, you would have to zoom your um, map out a little bit. So maybe we can zoom it to say 0.75. You want to make sure that you can see the whole level. Um, I mean, that's close enough. You probably want to zoom it out a little bit more if this is the style that you want. But I think you can understand um, the, what this option is. It just means that the that the minimap doesn't move, doesn't track the player. Uh, so let's set the, let's set these settings back. Um, move with player, yes. And rotation type, set that back to camera. Show area name. So if you look at the top of the minimap, above the minimap, there's a um, there's a little text that says demo area. Um, that's nice to have if you you know you transition between minimaps where you want to show the player where they are. You can turn that off if you want. So if you go back to here and we uh, and we turn that off, then that whole part of the widget is going to be uh, made invisible. So the next option we have is the border color. So currently the border color is brown, and this is the color around the edge of the minimap. So if we set that to say purple, um, you'll see that it's now purple around the edges. So you can change that to whatever color you want. Um, and then a couple of options here. You can change the text color. So we can change the text to say like blue. And you can change the background of that text, uh, that text field. So let's change that to yellow. So what you should see now is the word. Oh, you can obviously change the text as well. So let's call this uh, test area. It's going to say text area in uh, yellow, and it's going to have a background color of uh, of blue. So if we run that again, you'll see. Oh, and we have to turn the text back on, obviously, because we turned it off. The show area, the show area name. You'll see that the test area text at the top is yellow, and it's got a blue background. So you can change those options as well. Um, the minimap image, as we've seen in the setup video, is just the image that's linked to this minimap. Um, custom areas, um, I'm going to talk about in in another video. So this is uh, this is used if your area is um, if your area needs to be linked to different areas. And the the trigger itself for determining what is inside the trigger can't be square. So I'll explain this in another video. Um, so if essentially, if you want, like for example, um, if I want to go from this room to this room, then I can't use a tree a min map of this size because this covers this entire area. Um, I need I, I need a custom area that is only the size of this particular room and then I need another custom area that's only the size of this room so I'll, if you need functionality like that that's going to be explained in another video and I'll link that um, down below um, in the, the details of, of this video so cool so these are the options for the minimap itself um, and I'm going to go over the options of the minimap icons so um, I showed in the last video how to set those up. You essentially just have to add a component to the to the actor. So this NPC has a minimap component, um, and the icon is set to show a um, like, like a double sword. So if we click on this guy, you can see that in his properties, sorry, in his components, there's a component minimap icon, um, and you can. You can change that in the blueprint itself, or you can just change it sort of like per actor in the editor. Obviously, it's something that has to be that has to be sort of um, the same across all all instances. You'll do it in the blueprint itself, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show it here because it's it's, e it's easier. Um, icons enabled is obviously just um, whether the icon should be showed or not. So if I turn that off, then that icon is not going to be enabled. You can't see anything there. Um, if I, okay, so actually it's probably easy if I do it in the blueprint. So I can actually, I'm just going to open this, uh, this guy here. So the component minimap icon, I'm just going to go through over the properties quickly. So I, uh, icons enable, like I showed you before, just, um, 
sets whether that icon is available from the start. You can turn that on and off, like in the blueprint, but that's just the default setting. The minimap icon itself um, is the icon that is going to show on the actual minimap. Um, rotates with actor. So this one essentially controls whether the icon should rotate according to the actor's facing direction. So if we look at the third person character, which is the player character, you can see that it's got the arrow. Uh, I'm using arrow icon. And this is set to rotates with actor true. So whenever I rotate in the minimap, if you look at that um, that icon, that, that uh, arrow, you see that it rotates as the camera rotates. Um, but other icons, so for example, you can see this quest person here, like like um, if he were to face a different direction, that exclamation mark is still always going to be upright, right? So there are certain um, icons that you want to rotate with the player, like the, like the sorry, rotate with the actor, like the, uh, the triangle for the player, and then some of them like these icons. You, you you probably want you probably don't want those to ever rotate. So that's so that's uh, what what that option does. Uh, and then we have the mini map map icon scale. So that's just you can just scale it up or down um, according to what you need. The Z order I explained in the setup video as well. So this property essentially determines if there's overlapping icons which one should be rendered on top. And the higher the value, the uh, higher it's going to get rendered on top of other icons. So at the moment, if we look at the player one, you can see that the Z order for the player triangle is one. And the Z order for, um, for the NPC is zero. So if I walk over to the NPC and walk over him, you can see in the minimap, my Tri uh, my triangle is rendered on top, right? If I set the Z order of NPC to say like two, then that is going to render on top of the player triangle. See, so the triangle is now underneath. So that just allows you to have some control of which icons render over others. Set that back to zero. Um, the minimap, uh, the tint, so this is the color that you can tint the icon. Um, now, if you look at all the icons that come with this asset, they're all white. So you can tint any of these. Um, I made them white specifically so that you can tint them. Now, obviously you can import icons that are whatever color you want, like with a lot of detail. You can, you know, you can, you can import like proper images that like, that aren't just white. Um, but I made these white just so that they're really easy. They're really easy to tint. So if we um, if we ch if we tint it like say red, um, and then we compile that, you you should see that uh, this guy's inward icon is sorry, not the inward icon. The minimap icon is is now red. Um, his inward icon is not because that is controlled separately. Um, so if we look at um, the inward icon here. Um, it currently is, is set to true. I'm just going to go to this in a minute. I'm just going to explain these other um, options first. So the minimap animation type at the moment is set to none. If we set that to, um, there's you can either have set it to up and down, left, right, scale. So let's let's choose one of these. You can play around with these sort of in your own project. Set that to scale. Then you you'll see that that. Um, that red sword icon in the minimap is scaling up and down. So there's a few default animation types that you can set for your minimap app map icons. Uh, by default, they are um, set to none. And then the off-screen logic, so this one's quite important. This one essentially um, uh, tells the icon whether it should be still tracked if it's off-screen. So um, if I, so this one is currently set to not be tracked. So if I keep moving up here um, and that red sword at the bottom of the minimap goes off screen, 
um, it's going to disappear because it's no longer within range of the minimap. Um, but what you can do is you can set the off-screen logic to enabled. And if we do that, um, we compile that and run that again, you'll see that as soon as I go... Now, it's done it for every NPC, so you can see every NPC is now sort of on the, on the edge of the map. Um, that's obviously because I've done it to the base class. But if I keep running up here, you'll see that the when the red sword icon goes off screen, it's still tracked on the it doesn't it doesn't disappear from the minimap. It's still it's it's stuck on the edge. Um, and when I sort of move around, it's still stuck on the edge. So it never sort of disappears. Um, it just means that there are certain things that maybe you want to always track. So you can always find it. You can always sort of make your way towards it, and then obviously when it become when it goes, uh, when it becomes within distance again, then it sort of moves around the, the mini map again. So some other options with the um with that logic. So the off screen, if you open this um this tab, you can set it to obviously enabled or disabled. You can set the main icon scale off screen. Um, so we can make it so that when it becomes when it goes off screen, we want it to make it a, a little bit bigger, so it kind of pops up. You can change the opacity of it. Um, you can you can set this to show circle. So if we set that to true, when it goes off screen, um, a circle is displayed around it, um, and then you can sort of scale the circle as well. So if you scaled your off screen icon to one point two five, maybe maybe we want to increase the uh, circle scale to one point two five as well. So if we run that again, you'll see that when that um, when that sword icon goes off screen, it will enlarge and it will have a circle around it. So maybe it needs to be a little bit, even a little bit bigger. So that's just um, a way to make it obvious that that is now being tracked off screen. So let's um, maybe we can make it one point five. You can change the tint of the circle as well. So let's make that. Um, this is going to look really ugly, but let's make it green, just to make it obvious. So if I now move that icon off screen, it should scale up, and it's got a green circle around it. And you can see um, it's got a lot of green circles around the edge of the map because I've set that on the base class. But that's how you set these icons to be tracked if you want. Um, and you can optionally put a circle around it and then change this, the color of that circle. So that's the off-screen logic. Um, really useful, especially for things that you want the player to always be able to track and go towards. Um, now the inward icon, I'm just going to turn that off for now just so that um, I'm not having all these icons being tracked and sort of making it quite distracting. So I'm just going to disable that for now. So the show inward icon, um, is something that will allow you to define a, a icon um, that's separate to the minimap icon that's in world. So you, you can see that above him, he has a, a, um, a sword icon. I mean, generally, you probably want it to be something that's similar, but maybe you don't. So that's why you can optionally set a different um, a different icon. Now, you, you, you realize that uh, this is showing a single sword icon and you're wondering why does it show a double sword icon that's because this is the base class um, and in this particular instance I have overridden it right um, so if I if I restore the defaults then it will use the defaults of the base class and it will show a, a, a single sword now so that's why that is different if that's what if if, uh, if that's what you're wondering Um, I do like the double sword. Now, the inward icon um, needs to be bigger resolution than your minimap icon. This one's quite small because that just needs to be displayed on the minimap. This one needs to be displayed in world. So if you go to look at all the icons, for every icon, there is a, um, a, a big version and one that doesn't say big. So the one that doesn't say big is your minimap version. And then the one that's big is your is your in world version, right? And of course, you can import your own icons. So for this particular system, the uh, the minimap icons are 
are generally 30 by 30 and then the big ones are 150 by 150 um but again you can import whatever size you want scale them up and down that, that's up to you but that's just how i've done it for this asset uh so show world in in what icon set to true so if i disable that you'll see that um he won't have a icon above his head still still on the mini map that red sword but not above his head so if we set that back to true um, again, you can change the icon. So let's say hey, we want to change it to actually, we'll have to change it on the instance because I am overriding it. So you know, for for whatever reason, we want a double sword in the uh, um, in the minimap, but we want a a shield in game. Not really sure why you would want to do that, but. You know you can so you can see that he has a shield icon above his head now um we can change so this offset is important because i don't know how big your object is going to be so this um offset essentially um moves the icon a particular distance um above that actor so if we set this to say 250 you will see that it's going to be a lot higher than than where it was before. Um, so this one has to, this one will have to be set because again I don't know what um, the size of your, of your actor is, but 150 uh, was a pretty good um, distance z distance for us. Inward icon scale. So I'm not going to show this, but essentially you can scale the icon separately from the minimap. So if you want the inward icon to be bigger, you can scale it. Um, the tint is the same. You know, maybe we want to tint that like orange or something like that. And again, because my icons are all white, you can tint those, and they will basically have that color. Um, if you you know import images that are multicolored, the tint probably won't really work as well. But um, that option is there if you have white icons. Uh, inward animation type, so that's the same thing as the minimap icon. So you have these options. So if I set it up and down, you'll see that when I run the game, that shield icon is going to sort of bob up and down. So just a few very simple animations just to give um, a little bit more movement to these inward icons. Uh, and then... Um, so that so those are the so those are the main options for the minimap icon and the inward icons. So just going through those, uh, just just running through this level again. Um, so you can see again here. So once I've sort of, sort of gone through those those options, you can see what I've done here is that uh, these two red NPCs have a red dot for the minimap icon, but I've chosen not to show the inward icon. And then for this guy up here, he could be like a boss character. He has a skull for the inward icon. And I've also decided to turn on his, uh, sorry, he has a skull for the minimap icon. And I've also chosen to turn on his inward icon with the same icon as well. Um, these chests, I have um, the same thing, a chest icon in world, a chest icon in the minimap, the same icon, and I've set them to animate as well. Um... So what I'm going to go through next is some of the blueprint options. Um, so I'll probably do that in another video because this video has probably gotten pretty long already. If you do want to uh, understand how some of the blueprint stuff work, and you probably do because, um, you know, that's how I control things. Like when I walk up to these chests, I decide to turn off the icons and then that chest opens and it's disappeared from the, the game. Um, if I walk up to this NPC, the icon will change to a different one. So I'm going to show you um, the blueprint logic in the next video. But for this video, um, that's it. I've gone through um, a lot of the options for the minimap and the icons as well. Um, and hopefully you you can sort of follow, follow along and use these in your own game. So I'll see you in the next video.